All right, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, uh, God bless each and every one of you. I uh, hope we are up and, up and running, back up and running. Uh, earlier had a sound issue. Uh, and so uh, God bless each and every one of you. Just wanted you to come on and let me know if the sound is okay. Let me know if the sound is okay. Give me a thumbs up or uh, you know, just some sort of affirmation to let me know that everything is running fine. Okay, that's better. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you. I found out what it was. <laughs> uh, these uh, uh, technical components can uh, uh, be a little, you know, uh, whatever. <laughs> I guess I want, I'm going to But my bad. I am sorry about that. Um, and uh, I hope everything is clearer now uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, Brother Joseph, yes, <laughs> to God be the glory. <laughs> Again, I am sorry. I apologize. My bad. <laughs> to God be the glory. All right. So, um, yes, we're going to jump into this topic today um, by the grace of God. Uh, this topic um, is something that is vital um, of course, this is the raising up, you know, um, Christ-centered relationships. This is one of the things, one of the many topics that I often discuss, you know, is marriage. You know, why? Because marriage is on my heart, you know, as far as what God has uh, put on me, put that ministry, that mantle uh, on me to to speak about, to edify the brothers and sisters in Christ about. Anyone who personally knows me, intimately knows me, know that, you know, I really invest in um, the strengthening of marriages, the, the strengthening of understanding love and companionship and, and advancing in ministry, which flows out of the proper yoked marriage, you know? Uh, and so, uh, you know, in reference to this study, this is episode 13 of the Raising Up Christ-Centered Marriages. And what we're going to be talking about, you know, is something that is fundamental and foundational. Um, we um, have talked about so many issues and so many um, false perspectives and um, uh, fundamental foundational um, errors, you know, that we may believe about marriage, about relationships. We, we've talked about that in the past. Um, uh, actually, one episode ago. <laughs> uh, was it? No, no, actually, about three episodes ago, we talked about that. And um, uh, one of the uh, important things that we are also post, uh, supposed to grasp and, and have flowing within us is the ability to simply, as this title is saying, apologize, uh, apologize and to show actions that describe the humble or humility type um, characteristics or attributes in us, you know, because that's one of the things that we see in the uh, characters of the fruit of the spirit. There are many specific characters of the fruit of the spirit that describe humility. Um, let me give you a few. We went, we we know love. You know, of course, there's an element of humility in love. But when we look at love, joy, peace, uh, long suffering, long suffering is a definite characteristic that embodies. Um, uh, high measures of humility. Uh, we also have uh, uh, goodness, gentleness. Um, we have uh, uh, meekness. Meekness is another one that embodies high measures of humility, high measures of humility. Uh, and, and, and we also have another characteristic is faithfulness and self-control. And I want to pull out self-control is a third one, another one that uh, embodies to a high degree what we need in reference to humility. So humility is something that we're constantly seeing throughout 
the 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 nature of God, the nature of God, and humility is you know the fact that we understand um, God, we, we have a fear of God, and because of the fear of God, and I'm, I'm talking about a healthy fear of God. I'm not talking about um, a horror, horror movie type fear of God, you know, that people will will confuse the fear of God with. We're talking about you know, the, the love for God that enables me to depart from evil, the fear of God, you know, the Bible talks about in Proverbs, how it's the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of wisdom. And so we have to abide in him and understand that he is building us up in his nature daily. As we read the word, as we pray, as we worship, as we fellowship with like-minded believers, as we uh, you know, allow him to to make us into the people that are identified by him. Uh, and so marriage, um, the title ultimately is why don't you why don't you just apologize? And, and also another topic is going to be um, the will of God and also the Priscilla and Aquila ministry. Uh, and so I'm going to attempt to talk about all three. So, uh, or I'm, uh, and I'm definitely going to interweave all three as well. Uh, because one of the things, as we've been talking about characteristics and everything, we must also talk about the end result, um, or, or a, a type of end result. And so, with husbands and wives, there is a destination that God wants to open them up to. And so ultimately, you know, we are opened up to the the maturity and from that maturity, uh, maturity and experience, you have what God is going to place in us, which is the necessity to see individuals develop, you know, uh, by the power of God through the ministry that God at, is placing on men and women, on husbands and wives, which is ultimately the foundation of the, I, I guess you can say the human foundation of the church marriages. But ultimately, we know spiritually, uh, you know, uh, we, we know the spirit of God, the spirit of God, uh, the Jesus Christ himself you know, is the foundation, uh, but he works through people. He works through individuals and these individuals are supposed to uh, 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 advance, advance the kingdom of God towards the glory of God that he is ultimately going to receive by those faithful sons and daughters, husbands and wives in Christ Jesus. So let's look at, let's look at um, first Peter, I, I want to look at First Peter real quick. First uh, Peter chapter three, um, and read the. Um, well, let, let's uh, read some scripture, and then from there we'll just kind of dialogue or, or just uh, talk about um, some specific things. Um, it says here. Uh, verse seven, chapter three, verse seven. Likewise, ye husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Uh, finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrarywise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto called that ye should inherit a blessing for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil uh, and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Uh, so, a matter of fact, I'm going to read verse 12 because I love uh, uh, that verse as well. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So 
Let's look at the first point. The first point is why don't we, why don't you, why don't they apologize? Why don't we apologize? Uh, one of the issues that we have, not just in uh, the body of Christ, but of course ab abroad in the world, the body of Christ is supposed to be the image or the good standard or the, 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 the people that are supposed to be the transformed people that the world is looking at and desire to be transformed like them. Of course, the world is going to do what they want to do to a degree uh, and they are probably going to despise, uh, they definitely despise the children of the kingdom because the children of the kingdom represent the transformed state that they don't want to conform to. Um, you know, the Bible tells us, be not conformed to the world. You know, don't be like them. They, they should try to be like us. They should want to be like us, desire to be like us. So we are not conformed to the world. Uh, but we're tr because we're transformed by the renewing of our minds that we may ultimately prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And so w one of the issues about not apologizing is ultimately pride. Pride is one aspect of it. Um, and I do want to also add fear. Fear is another aspect of it. And so one of the issues we have, um, especially when it comes to husbands and wives, is that when we make a mistake, and, and so uh, we, we make mistakes because we have a fallen nature in us. That fallen nature is something that the saints are attempting to walk in a, a, a different direction concerning the saints where we choose to walk in the perfection of Jesus, not to say that we don't make individual mistakes. Uh, we do make mistakes, you know, but the issue is um, that we are not holding on to the way God desires the path of perfection that God desires for us to be, be matured in so that we can ultimately partake of God's ultimate perfection when we enter in to that state um, in eternity with God. Because we can be called the perfect because we abide in he who is perfect. So because we are in Christ Jesus, we are considered perfect without spot, without blemish, without wrinkle, um, no faults, nothing, none of that. We, we are perfect in Christ Jesus because of his works, because of what he has done. He, his death, burial, and resurrection, his righteous status, all of that is perfect. And he imparts that, that identity on us. And so we are considered perfect because of who Jesus is, not because of our individual deeds. Uh, we are, uh, uh, are individuals that live out the path, that direction towards the ultimate destination of perfection, that is by the Lord Christ Jesus. And, and so uh, w one of the issues um, that people, I'm going to say this quickly, one, one of the things that people have in the world uh, or think in the world that they, they, they want to accuse us of, now you think you, per you, you think you're perfect. You think you, you, you don't make any mistakes. You think you're this, you think you're that. And so we're not saying that we don't uh, make mistakes. We're saying that we live by a different standard than them. We live by that perfect standard that enables us to, uh, carry out the characteristics of perfection, the characteristics that look like the Lord Jesus, that look like the God of the universe. You know, we walk in his behavior, his characteristics that are considered perfect. And he himself cleanses us with his perfect sacrifice, the blood of Jesus that enables us to, to be righteous before the father. And, and so and the spirit of God ultimately enables us and, and um, in, in 
empower like empowers us and and gives us what we need so that we can uh, perpetually accomplish these good things these good deeds or whatnot and so one of the issues when it comes to apology is or or saying i'm sorry or whatever it is one of the issues that we have as far as husbands and wives is that we may make decisions and we're so adamant about the decisions that we make and we don't realize that when let's say for example those uh decisions fall through and, and they don't work let's say it's a financial financial decision let's say it's a spiritual uh ministry decision let's say it's um something else to where we're maybe um uh, trying to play matchmaker with people and uh, trying to get people married that shouldn't be married um, or, you know, whatever it is, when we are doing specific things uh, like these and they don't work, uh, the, the thing is we have to be individuals that uh, specifically uh, allow the Lord to um, re replenish us so that we can not continue to think and affirm as if that thing or that um, specific situation is something that um, we can uh, just pass the, the blame over to someone else. One of the things that we see even in the beginning, when it comes to Adam and Eve, we see as soon as uh, the trouble comes, as soon as the, the indictment, the accusation for a transgression comes, we see Adam, you know, passing the blame over to his wife. Um, uh, then you see the wife passing the blame over to the serpent and no one taking, um, owning up to what they've done. A and so, it's vital that when the Lord opens up a situation to reveal, man, that was actually the wrong decision. We should, instead of trying to pass the blame, we should, you know what? Hmm. You know what? Uh, maybe the Lord is allowing me to see this because he wants me to be careful with what I say, how much I uh, back something up as if it's the Lord saying it when it's not the Lord and it's really just me internally. And so God is desiring that husbands and wives understand how to walk in a level of humility that will aid them into the not reaping, not reaping of the public embarrassments of the relational embarrassments that can come about because of our own, in a sense, self-willed mentalities or self-willing self um, behaviors. And so God is desiring that individuals are able to be humble enough to acknowledge when they have erred, when they have, when they're, when they're at fault, when they have done something that's, it's, and so one of the, uh, um, before I continue in um, this direction, I, I want to talk about uh, one of the things that, that are important for us to understand in reference to, um, you know, apologizing or saying I'm sorry or just being upfront with something. One of the important things that people don't realize is that apologizing actually strengthens you and doesn't weaken you. Many people believe that it's a weakening uh, action. It's a weakening action. They believe that it's a weak weakening action because pride is more enticing and, it, and pride at times makes you feel stronger. But in reality, it's really just puffing us up. It's not really making us stronger. We feel confident and righteous when we make decisions uh, back to back that are right. But when those hiccups come and we make a decision that is not right, 
what happens is we feel inferior. We f that that's where that fear comes in. The first uh, two things that I said earlier was pride and fear. And so the fear comes in and then it makes us feel weak when in essence, if we change our mentality and we uh, live like the Lord Jesus desires us to live, you know, and think and behave, we can see that it's actually internally making us stronger. And so as we love the Lord Jesus Christ, as we love our wives, as we love our brethren, the, the, the relationships around us, we can grow when we walk in humility, when we walk in uh, the measure of, of, of love that God is requiring. So one of the words that I remember was said here was be courteous, be pitiful. Um, it, 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 those two words are important. Courteous meaning being, uh, uh, being uh, nice, kind hearted, um, being thinking in advance of someone um, and not to say things that would um, cause them to uh, be offended, you know, and so uh, being pitiful, uh, being pitiful is, you know, us understanding, you know, having, I, I would say, I would use this word uh, along with pitiful, which is having a, uh, an empathy, not just sympathy for a situation or a person, but empathy, understanding where the person is coming from, understanding the, the, the place that they are because you have a, a some sort of experience or, uh, or, or knowledge of what that person is going through in that specific situation. And so it's important that we it in advance and the love covers a multitude of sins. Uh, the, 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 the idea of us loving a person beyond the frailties of their current condition in the, uh, in the, in the idea of, or the knowledge of that, that person won't always be there. They will progress past that position. And so I must speak to them in a courteous or a pitiful or a em empathetic type manner as to help them get past those barriers because it's love that draws. I, I, I know the Bible um, says something to the degree of, by thy love and kindness have I drawn thee. I believe that's in the book of Isaiah, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, let me know, brothers. I'm submitting this in humility. Let me know <laughs> if it's the book of Isaiah. Uh, put it, put it up there, you know, just so I know uh, that that was the verse. Uh, I, I think it says, "By by thy love and kindness have I drawn thee." You know. Uh, which is important for us to know how one of the ways that God works. Um, so apologizing is important. Uh, and we can't. And so in reference to what I was saying earlier, we have to be individuals that don't justify when when what happens or the decisions that we we've, we've made is not decisions that are like Christ or we can see that they were weren't of God. We can't be individuals that now want to justify our current state uh, or, our, or our decision makings in the past as to avoid the necessary character development that we need. We have to have specific elements of character development. And so these uh, tribulations, trials, these confrontations of failure, when they come, they are beneficial for us to adjust and grow, adjust and grow. And, and so, but it takes a a character of humility for us to receive the necessary correction so that we can go to the next level. But when we 
receive correction. And what we do is just uh, judge the individual and their uh, uh, state or their specific um, flaws in other areas per se. You know, when we are not confrontable, we're not confrontable. When we, people can't come to us and tell us anything. Um, when you have that, that, that nature about yourself, when you have that, that, that um, when you have that, the, the characteristics like that, that is something that God does not desire in his sons and daughters of God. We must be individuals that are approachable, that people can talk to, that people can say, you know what, um, you know, I have this issue with you. Uh, can I talk to you about it? Um, and, and we can't at that moment, <laughs> you know, want to blow up, blow up and say, well, I got this issue with you. You know, like, and it, that's, uh, you know, then this person says something, and that person says something, and now we have the railing for railing, you know, going on, you know, as it says here in First Peter uh, chapter 3 verses, uh, what was that, verses 9, not running evil for evil, for evil railing for railing, uh, but contrary wise, blessing. So husbands and wives have to know how to be slow to speak and quick to listen. Quick to listen is vital, uh, is a actual attribute of humility as well. Being quick to listen, being a person that does not have a, a debate type mentality, a, a, well, she says this, so I, the husband, have to say this. Uh, the, the wife said this, so I, you know, so it's not a war. You, you're not fighting against your enemy. Your husband is not your enemy. Your wife is not your enemy. These, their the husbands and wives are supposed to be tools that sharpen each other. Iron sharpens iron so that they can ultimately um, advance in the direction that God is directing them. And of course, advancing in the direction, you know, I wanted to kind of talk about Priscilla and Aquila. Uh, uh, Priscilla being the wife, Aquila being the husband. I wanted to talk about that because I don't want to just talk about, you know, the fallen characteristics that we can exhibit and the lack of, of us having the humility to apologize. I, I want us to also um, talk about the inward direction, the, the direction that God wants to do. God wants to empower wives and husbands to be individuals that can advance his ministry. And so there is a cohesiveness. There is a compatibility. There is a loving nature. There is a, a, a maturity and, um, and character that God is wanting to impart to these husbands and wives so that they can advance according to uh, the the, the ministries, the multiple ministries that God wants to advance in the world because the world is suffering. You have uh, uh, marriages in these modern days that cannot survive. Why? Because they, uh, because marriage in itself was not created to function outside of the creator. The creator, the, the, the God of Israel, the uh, uh, Jesus Christ, the righteous, his father, the Holy Ghost, marriage is built to function alongside of the creator. So the, the Bible talks about in um, Ecclesiastes that threefold cord is not easily broken. God must be in the center of your relationship. So your relationship can function. Those relationships in the world, many of them that actually do function, um, they, they, they are heavily um compromised, heavily compromised. And there are many areas of imbalance and you can see it if you were to just spend one day with them. You can see it and, and they don't function the way they ought to. Um, and so let's look at the end result. Let's look at Priscilla and Aquila. 
Uh, any comments, brothers and sisters in the faith? Jeremiah, oh, it, oh it's, in, it's in Jeremiah uh, chapter 31, verses 3. Awesome, awesome. God bless you. With thy love and kindness, I have drawn thee. Amen. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, um, Holy Ghost. So, Priscilla and Aquila, who were they? Uh, Paul talks about them as his co laborers in the faith, his co workers, his, his beloved um, uh, uh, yoke fellows in the faith, you know, that he so highly esteems that he describes how they even would give their lives for him, how they have been in situations to where they would give their lives for Paul. Uh, and, and so he, he talks about that in Romans chapter 16, um, right after he talks about another sister, Phoebe, who was another powerful um, servant, sister in the Lord um, in that day. And so uh, Aquila, uh, the husband and Priscilla, the wife, um, I, 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 by reading Acts chapter 18, I believe, Acts chapter 18, yes, um, it talks about how Aquila was born in uh, Pontus, um, uh, an area um, over there, <laughs> over there in the, the, the eastern part of the world <laughs> of that day. And um, it doesn't say where his wife was born, but I, it doesn't really also say that if they were followers of Christ before they met Paul or, or, or did Paul give them the gospel and they were converted uh, to the faith, you know, at, at uh, when they met Paul in Corinth, you know, uh, but that is not really too relevant. Uh, anyway, we know that they followed Paul when they met Paul. They met Paul. They, they were so moved by the, the anointing, the power, the grace on Paul's life. And they followed Paul um, wherever he went. Uh, and so uh, we also know that Paul was a tent maker and they also were of the same occupation. They were tent makers as well. Uh, and the the thing about their ministry and and Paul was that they were what we can see as a normal couple they they weren't given um, you know high titles and and this and that they weren't given all sorts of um accolades and this and that they were just known as this wife and husband team uh, that were that was uh, uh, greatly, you know, contributing to the kingdom of God, greatly contributing to the advancement of the kingdom of God. And Paul acknowledged it. Paul acknowledged it. Um, and this is an example of the image of the husband and wife ministry dynamic duo in a sense that we are supposed to advance toward as far as husbands and wife husband and wife we have to be individuals that can have our character in subjection so that we can do the high calling the high ministry the high advancing of God's truth that God is calling his husbands and wives to these uh, his children to accomplish and so as we go in that direction, as we, uh, you know, uh, chasten our flesh, the Bible talks about uh, how, how it's important for us to, you know, have possess, possess ye your souls. It talks about controlling yourself, you know, controlling yourself, self-control, one of the attributes of, you know, the, 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 the fruit of the spirit. And, and so, that is important so that you can advance in the direction that God is ordaining, you know, his people. And so one of the very vital things about uh, just advancing that direction is that we as people have to ultimately model the not just way, but the inner development and be able to be apt to teach so that 
others can be outwardly and inwardly developed as well. The Bible talks about if you can't exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, you will no wise enter into the kingdom of God. And so what is that saying? That's saying that the Pharisees were individuals that on the outside, they look good. But on the inside, Jesus says they were dead men's bones. You know, they were open sepulchers, you know, open graves. They, they, they smelled on the inside. They had nasty attitudes. They professed godliness on the outside, but on the inside, people did not know them for righteous character, you know? And so we, and so that is something that is extremely important so that we can be effective concerning the ministry of God. One of the things, one of the reasons to why in this modern day ministry, certain uh, individuals that are in ministry, one of the reasons why they're not effective uh, to, to, to a great degree is because of the lack of the chastening of the flesh, the lack of the resisting of the attributes of the fallen attributes that basically hinder the power hinder the power that affirms the ministry. Uh, and so that's one of, the, one of the things that unforgiveness can do or the not being able to apologize or the not being able to acknowledge one's error. You know, these things are vital that we do because when we live that blameless life, that husband and wife blameless life, uh, we, we can be individuals that really model what uh, the book of Acts talks about. Book of Acts, where it, where it talks about, let us be of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and exemplifying wisdom. Honest report, full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom. You know, we, we have to exemplify that because when we do, there is a power that will affirm that will back up that will be the the evidence of what you're saying you know the, the bible talks about that we that that the kingdom of god is not just in word but in power and demonstration of the spirit so there is a proof behind the ministry ministry is not just the text of god not just the the literal scripture it's beyond the scripture and so God wants to empower individuals beyond the scripture uh, so that they can exemplify what's in the scripture. You know, so the scripture is something that helps us to gauge whether what we're seeing and doing is of God. And so that's uh, that's what I'm saying about that. That's that's definitely about it. De definitely important. So the will of God is that we mature that we mature so that we can continue to advance the kingdom of God towards the pattern, towards the likeness, towards the image that it should look like. We have so many individuals in this modern day that are not exemplifying uh, the will of God, are very uh, individuals that are tarnishing the, the image of God in a sense, even though they ultimately aren't, but they ultimately are. And we uh, who are the true sons and daughters of God, who are obedient to the word of God, uh, we have to continue to advance in the direction that God is leading people, leading us, so that we can exemplify the, 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 the true uh, group or body of people that Jesus is coming back for. Jesus said, Will he find faith when he returns? Will he find faith? And, and not just us professing faith, not just intellectually believing that we have faith, but people that not only believe, but display and live out on a daily basis the type of faith that Jesus is talking about that is backed up by the spiritual power of God, and we can ultimately grow and mature from the fruits thereof. And so uh, God bless each and every one of you guys in Jesus name. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. Uh, so, yes, forgiveness is important. 
Uh, I'm going to end it with that. Forgiveness is important uh, so that we can advance, advance in the ministry, that husband and wife ministry, the, the, the Aquila and Priscilla type ministry. Um, you know, they, 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 they are individuals that, you know, sowed into a mighty man named Apollo. A mighty man, Apollo, this Apollo, he knew the gospel of John. He, he knew that he knew his, his, he knew the, the 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 baptism of John. He knew that doctrine, you know, as far as what John taught the people, the, the people that he was in a sense, the he was in a sense like the forerunner, the one to roll out the red carpet for the Lord Jesus Christ, teaching them, baptizing them, you know, and um, and so. Apollo was strong in that, but then you had, uh, you know, Aquila, the husband and Priscilla, the wife coming to basically affirm and implant and mature his doctrine. Um, the, the Bible talks about that he, they, they spoke to him the word of God more perfectly. They, they taught him so that the doctrine that he was communicating to the people was at its matured stage, he, he they added to his faith. They added to uh, the the understanding that um, that he needed in order for the kingdom of God to be without fault, to continue to advance according to the times. Uh, and so, to God be the glory. We have to learn to be humble, to be humble, to apologize when it's necessary, especially when, you know, um, it's it's out in the open, you know, what you may have done. And, you know, your, your wife is, you know, she's not she may not confront you, your husband. He may not confront you. But, hey, you know understand you know you you come and you say well you know what i'm sorry you know what um you know that decision i made you know a while back yeah that wasn't yeah, that wasn't right you know the lord revealed that to me or you know that that right there you know that right there yeah you know because god's no respecter of persons god's no respecter of persons i'm gonna say that again god's no respecter of persons so we all are going to have to give an account for what we do. And so let's be blameless, you know, and let's choose to be blameless and be honest, be honest with what, what we've done, you know. And so let's not and, and again, let's not uh, uh, try to say, you know what? No, no, you can't come to me because you deal with this or you can't you, you, you can't you can't say anything because you did that last week. You can't. I mean, understand that to some degree, yes, you have to ask the Lord whether what that person is saying is right or wrong. You know, you, you, you know, you have to, because if you continue to block everyone as if no one has the right to tell you anything, man, how high is that pride? You know, and so God wants to enable us to to be slow to speak and quick to listen so that we can um, receive the proper edification, encouragement, empowerment, and evidence, you know, the evidence behind our ministry that proves our ministry in Jesus' name. So love you, brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. God bless each and every one of you. Love each and every one of you. Uh, and... Um, also, as I always say, feet follows focus. So focus on the Lord Jesus and your feet will follow. Walk in the victory of our Lord. And uh, oh, 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 death, where is your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? I love you. Be blessed. And I'll see you again.